this is a very interesting case of a grade 3-4 hard brownish cataract with a pre-existing PC opening. And this gentleman had a bilateral cataract. Now, this is how the ASOCT shows as a clear cut opening in the posterior capsule. And this is the post-surgery opening in the posterior capsule. Now, we will proceed uh, with the surgery and discuss the salient points. The first thing in these cases is we have to make sure there is no fluctuation of anterior chamber. We make a relatively large oval sized rexis. Now, this oval sized rexis is always beneficial in removing the D segments or D hemi segments in these cases, which we will see as we proceed. Now, this oval rexis is going to help in case of a PC opening to place our lens perpendicular to the linear axis of the rexis. And also, it will help us to remove the D segments without rotation. Now, we proceed to do the special use of cannula. This cannula has been designed by me. It's a curved, smooth, round, blunt edge camera, 23 gauge. We just do a hydrodelineation, avoid doing a hydrodissection, making sure that there is not much pressure fluctuation, and also making sure there's no pressure on the cataract as such towards the posterior pole because this can result in the posterior capsular opening. Very gentle control movement. You can see the shape of the cannula makes sure that there is a 360 degree hydration of the nucleus and it is separated from the cortical plate. Then increasing the FACO power for this particular case, we go on a FACO power of 50. Now what we do here is we remove the loose cortical plate on top of the nucleus. This gives us a very good view of the roof of the nucleus and we proceed now to change the chopper. We go for a sharper chopper. Now making sure that there is no pressure on the posterior side of the cataract, we create a trench which is broader. We have to aim for a broader trench here because it ensures that the sleeve can enter the trench and we have a deeper trench. In case the trench is not wide, then the sleeve will prohibit that phaco tip from getting embedded. Now we do a peripheral chop, very slow control chop, making sure that while we are doing this, there is no pressure on the posterior capsule and there is just a slight separating movement. And as you can see, since the cataract is very hard and the nucleus is thick, we did not get an adequate depth of the crack. So, before we proceed to do a manual crack, we will ensure before we remove the irrigating instrument, we instill viscoelastic into the anterior chamber so as to make sure that the chamber does not collapse. Having filled the anterior chamber with viscoelastic, we will proceed to crack the two D segments. Now, we use two blunt instruments and a very, very controlled cracking starting from that area where it is cracked and slowly proceeding the pressure towards the uncracked area. While doing this, we have to make sure there is no jerk and no posterior pressure. The pressure of cracking is only in the lateral equatorial sides of the capsular pack. You notice that we could crack the D segments. Now we have two D segments which are there in the cataract. Now all you need to do is go on a low FACO power mode with your bevel tilted towards one side of the D segment, embed the junction of 2 by 3rd, 1 by 3rd of the D segment and slowly pull it out of the oval capsular axis. Now this is where our oval capsular axis has really helped us. Now this movement has to be done without rotation because if you rotate the D segments, there are chances that the pre-existing posterior capsular opening which was there might open up and you could lose the hard D segment or the hard nucleus into the vitreous. Now, without any chamber fluctuations, we are doing this phaco emulsification of the pupillary plane, making sure that we are not letting go of any loose piece as we are doing the procedure. After that, the plate is removed. Now, we can see that the PC is open. You can see the fluctuation and the capsular flap sign. But nevertheless, since there are no fluctuations in the interior chamber, all we do is we turn and tilt the phaco tip on the opposite side. You could see that the cataract was wanting to, the D segment was actually wanting to get subluxated into the vitreous. But a good amount of control 
vacuum and FACO make sure that no piece of the cataract was able to go through the posterior capsular opening. Now all this procedure is now being done in the anterior chamber, not even in the pupillary plane because now I don't want to lose this cataract piece to the vitreous. Notice that my left chopper is supporting the cataract. There is a loose piece of cataract which is there near the wound but I am sure my chopper is holding it and I don't let it sink in. Now making sure that before I withdraw my irrigating instrument, I instill slight amount of viscoelastic but making sure I do not fill the anterior, anterior chamber with viscoelastic or over pressurize it because doing that will cause the viscoelastic to go into the vitreous and cause most vitreous loss. Now the second thing I do is close up the wound because now I will plan to do anterior vitrectomy. Always remember never to do anterior vitrectomy without putting a suture on the main wound. Now having done the anterior vitrectomy, you have to be few things which you have to be very careful are. You should not nibble onto the already very very long uh, posterior capsular linear tear and not eat into the anterior capsular excess because that is your lifeline. This is where you will be placing the IOL perpendicular to the linear axis of your oval capsular axis. Now we go to extend the wounds slightly because we will be introducing a three-piece lens and normally these three-piece lenses would go anything between 3.1 to 3.2 millimeter wound. Now I am using an Orolab uh, three-piece IOL here. It's a very simple pre-loaded IOL. Now pushing some viscoelastic into the cartridge tunnel, making sure that the anterior chamber is just well inflated but not over inflated. The bevel of the cartridge is turned towards the left, making sure that the leading haptic goes right in between the oval capsular axis anterior capsule and the posterior surface of the iris. As the lens is opening up, we start rotating the cartridge anti-clockwise. Now we wait for the haptics to open up. Once the training haptic has opened up, you can use a forceps or any instrument of your choice just to dial the lens in one single plane just behind the iris. Having done so, now I place the axis of the haptics absolutely perpendicular to the oval axis. I have not attempted to do a posterior optic capture in this particular case because the linear tear in the posterior capsule is right till the equator and I think any maneuvers trying to push the haptic or optic of the lens behind the capsule may cause it to extend and I might have an extension of the posterior capsular tear into my capsular axis. Ensuring that my lens is well secured and centered, I proceed to stain the vitreous with diluted hydrocortisone and I find since there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber, my vitrectomy was successful. Now I proceed to suture the wound now because the wound has been extended to a 3 millimeter plus size. We go ahead do vitrectomy to remove the vitreous if any along with hydrocortisone and once we realize that the all hydrocortisone has been totally taken out of the anterior chamber, the pupil is absolutely well centered, the lens is in the sulcus perfectly centered, we hydrate the wound and close up. So this is a typical case where we had a hard cataract with pre-existing PC opening and we have managed to complete the surgery without any loss of cortex or nuclear parts to the vitreous. Thank you.